There is another dramatic sign tonight of just how deeply flawed Afghanistan's election a week ago may have been. The BBC has learned that the US special envoy to Afghanistan has had what's been described as an explosive meeting with President Hamid Karzai over the country's election. Sources have revealed that Richard Holbrook raised concerns about ballot stuffing and fraud and said that a second round runoff could make the process more credible. The final results in the election won't be known until next month. From Kabul, Ian Pannell has this exclusive report. They're perhaps the two most powerful men in Afghanistan, the president and the U.S. special envoy. The relationship began well last February. We have come here to listen and to learn your points of view. But now the relationship appears to have soured. They met again the day after the election. We have no pictures of the meeting, but multiple senior sources have described it as explosive. A dramatic bust-up, said one. The BBC has learned the American raised concerns about ballot stuffing and fraud. He said a second round runoff could make the process more credible. President Karzai reacted very angrily, and after just a few minutes, the meeting ended. The US Embassy in Kabul denies he stormed out and refused to discuss the details. The outcome of the Holbrook intervention, if we may call it that, could well be to delegitimize any leader in Afghanistan who comes out of this electoral process. And that cannot help the Western alliance. It cannot help the government of Afghanistan. It has only to help the Taliban. Ensuring these elections are successful is vital to the West's operation in Afghanistan. It's a process the Americans have followed and coaxed. Now, doubts about fraud and turnout could undermine the mission. There have been more than 1,700 complaints about irregularities in this election. 270 have been classified as serious priority A cases. If they're proved, they could have a material effect on the outcome in that area. As we reported on Tuesday, it's not just corruption, but turnout that threatens this election. Less than 40% voted across the country. But in the South, where UK and US forces are based, the numbers are much lower. If, as I fear, this election demonstrates that the whole political strategy of the past eight years of democratization, democratic state building, creating a centralized Afghan state has in fact failed, well, we need to recognize that failure and come up with something different. These revelations come as two more British soldiers are flown home, killed in action in Afghanistan. Private Jonathan Young of 3rd Battalion, the Yorkshire Regiment. Sergeant Paul McAleese of 2nd Battalion, the Rifles. It's a grim reminder of the sacrifices and the risks taken to allow these elections to happen. Pursuing peace and democracy in Afghanistan is a battle that still shows no sign of ending. Ian Pannell reporting there, and Ian joined me from Kabul shortly after he filed that report. Ian, I don't know if it's too cynical to suggest that at this stage in the proceedings, it's not such a bad idea for U.S. authorities like Holbrook, like Hillary Clinton, to be seen to be skeptical about both Hamid Karzai and this process. That's possibly true, but I think it's a very fine balance between appearing skeptical, appearing in somehow uh, above the process, not interfering, and on the other hand, seem to try to influence the process, to try and direct it so it seems credible, so it seems legitimate. It's a very difficult balance, I think, for the United States to strike. We know that the U.S. administration has had problems with Hamid Karzai. They are concerned about his ability to govern the country, to spread governance, to build institutions, to deal with corruption to deal with allegations that some members of his campaign team, other members of his government are involved actively in drug dealing in the country. These are all ongoing issues that have still to be resolved. And the reality for the United States is that Hamid Karzai is still the main contender here. He is the man most likely to win, and they are still going to have all these problems when the election is over. But if they can't show that this process was credible, that the fighting, the sacrifices, the money, the time was worthwhile, then what on earth has it been for? And then there will be questions about whether or not there is a plan B. And at the moment, there doesn't seem to be one. And Ian, as you've reported, if, if it is seen not to be credible, it's not just going to be because of the fraud that you found, but also presumably just because the turnout was so low in some of the key areas. 
Yes, I think the two things absolutely go alongside each other and they reinforce each other in many ways. I mean, we have to wait and see what the Independent Election Commission finally come out with as the overall turnout. There is an indication at the moment that it's going to be somewhere between five and six million people. That's less than it was in 2004 when seven million less actually registered to vote. It means the turnout is somewhere around 30 to 40 percent of the country. That's nationwide and in the south we're getting a very strong indication that it's been much patchier and of course the south matters not just because that's where the insurgency is but that's where the majority ethnic Pashtun group is based. They should be the support base for the president and if large numbers of people have not voted there then there'll be questions about the mandates that the next president of the country will enjoy and his ability to deal with the violence in those very areas. Okay, a critical moment for Afghanistan and of course Afghanistan's relationship with the West. Ian Panel in Kabul, thanks very much for joining us. The Afghan election authorities have released another batch of results from the presidential election held on the 20th of August. President Hamid Karzai has increased his lead over his main rival. Here's our correspondent in Kabul, Chris Morris. We're now told that about 35% of polling stations across the country have been accounted for. The votes from those polling stations have been counted. President Hamid Karzai has nearly a million votes, and that is about 46% of all the votes that have been counted so far. His nearest challenger, Dr. Abdullah, has 31%. So the gap between them is widening slightly, but we still don't know whether Mr. Karzai or indeed any other candidate, although that clearly looks much less likely, will get over 50% of the vote and therefore avoid the need for a second round of voting. Uh, the other development today, not a surprise, further allegations of fraud. Dr. Abdullah has said there has been massive state-engineered fraud in this election. And there are real questions now, I think, about the credibility of the process. If his campaign and the other campaigns of smaller uh, party candidates believe that they uh, have not been given a fair crack of the whip, that the government has fixed this election, then I think the credibility of the process will be cast into doubt. The Electoral Complaints Commission in Afghanistan says it's received more than 2,000 allegations of fraud and vote rigging following this month's presidential vote. A spokeswoman for the commission said 567 of the complaints were serious enough to affect the outcome of the vote if they were upheld. The latest partial results give President Hamid Karzai a lead over his nearest rival, Abdullah Abdullah. Our correspondent Chris Morris is in Kabul. We asked him to what extent the complaints are likely to affect the outcome of the election. Well, all of these complaints have now got to be investigated. There are two separate bodies. There's the uh, Afghan Election Commission, which is uh, producing the results and releasing those results as the votes are counted. Then there's a separate body, the Electoral Complaints Commission, uh, which is going through all the complaints, deciding how to characterize them. And as you say, it's now decided it has 567 complaints, which, if proven, would materially affect the outcome of the election in that particular area. So we're now moving to, into a phase where investigators for the Electoral Complaints Commission are going out to warehouses, to polling stations across the country to try and gather evidence to see whether those complaints can be upheld. If they are upheld, then the Complaints Commission has the power to order the Election Commission to discount those particular ballots. Could we see the election overall being annulled? No, I think that's very unlikely. Uh, what we are seeing, of course, are increasing complaints uh, and increasingly vociferous complaints of fraud, particularly from opposition candidates, opponents of President Karzai. Uh, his main challenger, Dr. Abdullah, but also some of the smaller candidates as well, have been uh, very strident in their criticism. Uh, but it's up to the Electoral Complaints Commission to, to decide what percentage of the vote it thinks should, should be discounted. Those votes would then be removed from the final tallies, and only then will we see whether any single candidate, and realistically, if it's going to be anyone, it's going to be Hamid Karzai, has over 50% of the voters in this first round, allowing there to be no need for a second round of voting between the two main candidates. Chris Morris.